Okay, from Quezon City rin po pala. Meron tayong mga participants from Quezon City and from Albay. Good afternoon po dyan. Hopefully, hindi po yung umuulan. Dito sa Cebu, umuulan eh. <laughs> Good afternoon po sa lahat. Oh, from Zamboanga City. Good afternoon po. From UP Diliman at saka from Caloocan. Oh, it's raining in Caloocan. <laughs> Hello po, hello rin po from Cavite. We have uh, participants from Bacolod and Baguio as well. As well as Nueva Vizcaya. <laughs> Mainit pa po ba sa Cavite? Good naman po. <laughs> Ulan din sa QC. <laughs> okay, good afternoon rin po. Good afternoon po dyan galing sa... Uh, good afternoon po dyan sa Isabela. At saka sa Bataan. Meron rin po ako mga uh, friends in the medical profession dyan sa Bataan. <laughs> okay. Marami po pala tayo ngayon. Hopefully, we'll be able to reach um, our expected number of participants. Those who registered were able to come in. If not, um, UP Cebu TLRC's uh, webinar or live stream via our YouTube channel. Hmm? Okay. Ah, good afternoon rin po sa, sa San Pedro, Laguna. Okay. From Quezon City. Marami tayong from, coming from Quezon City ngayon na. So, meron rin tayong galing sa Mindanao. So, meron tayong galing sa Zamboanga. So, thank you so much for uh, joining us. Okay. From Biliran. I went to Naval. A few years ago, before the pandemic, I was there. Um, uh, I was there reviewing for the teachers, uh, teachers board examination. Good afternoon, rin po dyan sa ilo ilo at sa kasa kagayan de oro. Wow! Good afternoon, rin po. Future sociology practitioner. Magagamit po talaga niyo tong uh, malingit na handog namin. Hopefully po. So this particular uh, webinar is already a rerun because our first webinar, we had so much, um, we have so much registrants that we cannot uh, take everyone in. But um, we are very happy that Sir Sip uh, accepted our request for a rerun. So we are very happy that he can still do the, uh, the webinar. Uh, the second time around. Okay. Good afternoon po dyan sa Pan Pacific University, Pangasinan. Okay, so marami pala tayo galing sa NCR. Okay, so it's 1.30. Um, I welcome you all to this little offering coming from the island of Cebu <laughs> by the University of the Philippines Cebu Teaching and Learning Resource Center. And I hope today will be a very fruitful and uh, learning afternoon for all of us. So, ako even, uh, even I was the host for how many weeks already? Even if I still host the rerun, I learn something new every time. So, I'm always exci excited to listen to our speakers and hopefully uh, you as well no? are excited to listen. Before anything else, I would like to give our uh, webinar reminders. I'll be sharing my screen. Okay. So for our webinar today, um, these are our reminders. This webinar will be recorded, so kindly make sure that you hit the got it button for the recording. Don't worry because this webinar is recorded for documentation purposes only. And this is also live stream, uh, especially for some of you, uh, maybe, your, maybe your internet connection is not that good at this moment. You can still review this particular webinar via the live stream that we have. And this is the reason why we have to record it. And uh, if you feel uncomfortable that this session will be recorded, you are actually free to leave. We are okay if you use the uh, if you use the uh, YouTube live stream. Okay. 
Um, some webinar netiquettes to note, kindly mute your microphone during the talk because we want to make sure that the speaker's voice is clear to everyone. We may opt to review, remove you if you don't follow these requests and kindly refrain from taking pictures or videos of the talk because if you do so, you will be held accountable for data privacy violations if the copy you create that leaks into the internet outlet. We wish to keep the identity of our participants private so as yours as well. May we ask that please do not post your webinar certificates via Facebook or any social media because these certificates are for you only. This means that um, we are trying to make sure that your identity as well as the identity of all the individuals involved in this particular webinar is also protected. Thank you so much uh, for doing that later. Kindly, kindly make sure that you don't post your certificates. You can post uh, your attendance, but please don't post your certificates as well. Some important data coming from the web. Okay. Kindly avoid using the annotation tool. Once the annotation tool is activated, you might unconsciously swerve your arrow towards the speaker's presentation and draw unnecessary lines that may block the participant's view. On some text and images on the slides, this may also distract the participants and the speaker as well. If you have any questions while the talk is ongoing, you may put them in the chat box and after the talk, you will have a chance to ask your questions. We wish for you to only use the chat box rather than the voice because of our time constraint. We only have two hours maximum. Don't forget to evaluate afterwards because your inputs on the webinar will help us improve our next webinar. So please, please do not forget to evaluate. And after you have answered the forms, you will be given a proof of your participation. The evaluation link will be opened right after the webinar and shall remain open for only 15 minutes. I repeat, the evaluation link will be open right after the webinar and shall remain open for only 15 minutes. Your certificate will be sent to you directly after you have evaluated. For those who cannot attend via the uh, Zoom app, our webinar is currently live streaming on our YouTube channel at TLRC UP Cebu. For those watching through YouTube, you will get your proof of participation by staying until the end of the session. And we'll be announcing the instructions at the live chat, so please stay tuned. Noelle will be handling the YouTube, uh, YouTube live stream, so kindly make sure that you check on her live on her chats every now and then. These are our socials for webinar and training updates. Follow and contact us through these platforms through the Facebook page of the Teaching and Learning Resource Center, University of the Philippines, Cebu, or through our YouTube channel at the LRC UP Cebu, or you may find us at tlrc.upcebu.edu.ph, that's our website, or you may directly contact us through lrc.upcebu at up.edu.ph. So we hope you will be having a good learning period uh, to, I mean, it's just two hours, but I do hope that it will, it will impact you as a person, especially that this particular topic is very important, not only on a day-to-day -day basis, but for your future, future goals as well. So thank you so much. Mike, I will be giving you the floor to introduce our speaker. Michael. <laughs> Michael, naririnig ba ako? <laughs> yes, miss. Loud and clear po. <laughs> okay, so good afternoon, everyone. So again, thank you for joining us. Um, so it is my honor to introduce our resource speaker this afternoon. He finished his bachelor's and master's degree from the University of San Carlos and a registered guidance counselor. He is trained in psychosocial support conducted by the Israel Truma Coalition. He has been providing mental health and psychosocial first aid to survivors in the aftermath of disasters like the landslide in Ginsaugon in St. Bernard, Southern Leyte in February 2006, the earthquake in Bohol last October 2013, and the typhoon Yolanda in areas of Leyte, San Remigio, Medellin, and Tabogon in November of 2013. At present, he is one of the guidance services specialists at UP Cebu. 
He is the UP Cebu representative to the Ugnaya ng Pahinungod Committee on Psychosocial Emergency Services of the UP system, along with other committee works in the university. Everyone, let us give a virtual applause to Mr. Cipriano Oleta. Good afternoon, Sir Seb. Good afternoon, Sir Seb. Good afternoon, Sir Seb. Good afternoon, Okay, good to know. Okay, so um, how are you this afternoon? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, so um, I said by Miss Dira, I also welcome you to this um webinar on uh, building resiliency. But before that, um, can we have a profile of the group, like how many came from Luzon, from Visayas, and from Mindanao? So, Michael, can we have the profiles? Mike, is there a poll running? If not, we can just chat. Sir Sip, we have a lot coming from NCR, actually. We have from Albay, Quezon, Caloocan. We also have from Rizal. And we also have coming from Iloilo and Zamboanga City. Okay, so karamihan sa Luzon. Yes. <laughs> so I hope that... Um, this afternoon session will be a fruitful one to each one of us in terms of um, building resiliency. Okay, um, I would like to share my screen. Huh? Yes, yes, sir, sir, you may go. Okay, sir. Okay, so okay, so um, okay, so um, try to identify first in terms of our journey. Like if you are from if you came from uh, UP Cebu and you like to go to Mactan International Airport, there is a road map. There are three ways which would help you to reach that destination. There will be a lot of traffic signs. So this roadmap would help us arrive in our destination, or if you like to, to Maktan International Airport. But then there is a journey that has no roadmap. Do you know that journey? Okay. Ano pang yun na yan na walang roadmap? Okay. So, that journey na walang roadmap is our life's journey. So, life is a journey. It has no roadmap. This journey are filled with lessons, hardships, heart aches, joys, celebrations, and special moments that will ultimately lead us to our destination, our purpose in life. The road will not be always smooth. In fact, um,
throughout our travels, we will encounter many challenges. Hey. So, as we go through our journey, we will not expect that the road that we are following or taking is most. As mentioned, there will be a lot of challenges. There will be, we'll face a lot of adversities and other stresses in life. So, daming um, because of that, I stress tayo. Because of that, um, we'll feel this way. Now, let's try to um, take a look of the impact of these adversities in our physical and emotional well-being. Okay, can you see the, the uh, picture of the whole person? Okay, that book, ba? Not yet, Papu, Sir Sip. Ah, okay, so I have to. That one. Yes, Papu, Sir Sip. Okay. So those are the impact of the adversities, of the stresses that we experience in life. Like headaches. How are you today? Do you have an ache? Because stress can trigger and intensify, intensify tensions in your head. Stress in, increase depression. Those chronic stress can wear us down emotionally and lead us to depression, especially if we not deal with the stress. Another one is heartburn, insomnia, rapid breathing, weakened immune system, the risk of heart attack, high blood sugar, pounding heart, high blood pressure, fertility problems. We have also stomach ache, erectile dysfunctions, low sex drive, missed periods, and tense muscles. So those are some of the impact of those adversities and stresses in life. Hey, now, Anger, sadness, joy, and fear are some of the most common emotions that we experience by every human being. These emotions play an important role in every aspect of our life. Emotions help us understand whether we should flee from danger, stand up for ourselves, or give someone a hug. Emotions are 
normal for certain life events and are designed to help us at those times. It is important that we have to recognize the impact of those emotions on our physical, emotional well-being, as well as to recognize their impact in our functioning at times. Learning to recognize and manage these emotions is vital if we are to maintain an optimum level of functioning and resiliency in life. Talking about resiliency, meaning we have to build our very own personal resiliency. Each one of us has different ways how to handle stresses. Let me share this one in terms of uh, what are the way, what are what are the ways of building resiliency. At first, we try to define what is resiliency. Resiliency is the ability to adapt well to adversity, trauma, tragedy, threats, or even significant sources of stress. In other words, we learn to bounce back in every time we, this, uh, problems will come into our life. Now, there are some responses in adversities in life. One would be the way we think. It could be negative or it could be positive. If we think too much of the problem that we can't focus anymore what to do. In the positive side, we try to think and try to do something about it. In terms of behavior, we behave according to what we're thinking. Then feeling. We feel inadequate. We feel down. Then our physiological aspect, like we like to stay at home, we will not even try to move. So those are some of the responses in adversities in life. In other words, we respond those adverse life in a total behavior. It is compared by a car. If you look at a car, the first two wheels, the front wheels, the acting and the thinking. At the back, there's the feeling and the physiology. Each one of us has the basic need. Now, all our behavior is our best attempt in getting our needs met. All behavior composed of acting, feeling, thinking, and physiology. In other words, when we respond a certain situation, our behavior, we behave because it's a composition of what we think, what we ask, the feeling, and the physiology. If you want to change the way we are feeling emotionally or physically, the most effective thing to do is to change what we are doing. Because sometimes we feel this way. We feel down. We are we are we are um Nakaya. 
So the most effective thing to do is to change what we are doing. Instead of staying in your home, maybe you can do something about that in a positive way. If because of the situation, we cannot change what we are doing, we can change what we are thinking. Because if we think positively, our behaviors, the way we think, because it is positive, the actions that we are doing, the feeling and the bodily response would go with the positive thinking that we have. So that's um, in terms of responses in adversities in life. Thinking, behavior, feeling, and physiology. In other words, respond not only what it is, but it is the total behavior that you respond in a certain space in life. Now, there are some coping strategies. I would like to share with you this strategy that is used in Israel. In Israel, we have, um, in terms of war, children and all um, the, the civilians there experience stresses. Like every time they would hear the sound, the alarms, they have to do something positive to be, um, just to be safe in that particular time. Now, we use the Basic pH. So that's the actual name of that coping strategy that they are using. Basic pH. The B is the belief system. If there are some concerns, like what we have at this time, pandemic, parabang. At ano na, parang nahirapan na magka, there's, um, the anxiety is too high, parang depressed na, you don't know what to do. Every time, we'll open up the television, only the numbers of deaths, numbers of affected uh, individuals, that hopefully um, this thing would stop. But because of that, Belief, we do something. It could be you believe that there is a God that would help us to enhance our spiritual life. If we believe that God would help us, that God would protect us. If you look at um, some of the Facebook, other platform, you can see a lot of prayers in the sources. Catholic churches, other Christian churches, they encourage each one of us to believe, to pray, to enhance our spiritual life. That we will not, or we will not fall down and malestablish na na ito na talaga wala na katap talagang ano na it will end like this. Okay. Then, the affect. So, because of these experiences, our emotions, the print up emotions. So, we try to, the emotional aspect of each one of us, we try to find someone we can talk to, that can express your feelings, yung kinatago mo na feelings that um, parang may palabas because those feelings would affect our life also, the negative feelings that we have. So yung mga negative feelings, you try to tell us, you fight someone. Okay. Then, the social interactions. That is one of the 
coping strategy that we have to interact. We have to perform our role. Instead of nasa bahay lang, maybe you can feel up, you can enter up through chat or through video call or whatever things that you can enter up with other people. Then, we have the imagination. Maybe because of, of those experiences, because of the challenges, you can create a project or the aspect in your life that you like to compose a song or drawing. So, meaning you have to enhance your imagination. Because when we imagine, it is limitless. And we have to do that one like um, some of the students, instead of being discouraged, they try to get some pen and paper, they try to imagine, try to make stories. That's one way of coping some stresses in life. Then, the cognitive aspect. So meaning, we have that gift, the gift to plan, the gift to solve our problems. Then the last one is physiological, meaning instead of staying at home, maybe, or maybe at home you can do some exercises. Because maybe you're not allowed to walk around. Maybe 15 minutes a day for that particular exercises. Or if in your place you're allowed to walk around, then you can. Maybe 30 minutes rest walking, jogging, or biking, or swimming. So that we try to make ourselves um, para mag healthy movement. Hey, so those are the some um, some strategies in dealing with stress or adversities in our life. Basic age. Maybe some of you are doing these things. What we can do is just to enhance, continue doing those activities that would help us cope with the difficulties in life or the challenges in life. The difficulties, challenges in life would come, but we try to look within us. We have the resources, how to face those challenges in life. Now, we try to increase our resiliency. As individuals, we try to build connections. In building connections, we try to prioritize, connect with people who can understand you, people who are empathetic to you. Try to focus on the persons whom you can trust and those individuals are compassionate. Another one to build connections is try to join in a group, being active in civic organizations, place-based communities, and local organizations, because in doing so, you can discover and you will realize that you are not alone in the struggle. Some of them, parang mas mabigat pa kaysa new experience. Another one is foster wellness. In foster wellness, try to take care of your body. The same with the physiological aspect. Maybe you can have a practice for mental health and building resilience, promoting 
passive lifestyle factors like how, in terms of your the food that you're taking in terms of the number of hours you're sleeping it should be um a thing that it is one because it is healthy okay and at the same time practice mindfulness mindful yoga journaling or other strong practices like prayer or meditation and help people build connections and restore hope the other way to foster wellness is to try to avoid negative outlets like drinking alcohol substance abuse just to eliminate the feeling of stresses but those things will not help we have to focus what is the most positive way that this um, feeling will be released another one to increase resilience is find purpose in finding purpose it's like to help others volunteer or simply support a friend in their own time of need maybe you're, you're thinking that you're carrying a big problem but if you try to volunteer try to help even a friend who also experience adversities in life maybe you can discover that oh my problem is compared with this person then be proactive acknowledge and accept your emotions during hard times there are times that we try to hide we try to disown not emotions and being to accept you can ask yourself what can i do about a problem in my life or just say what can i do to solve this problem sometimes we do not know what to do but it's right try to find purpose in life ask yourself what can i do to solve this kind of problem then moving towards your goals in other words each one of us should have a goal in life a realistic goal and do something regularly to achieve that goal and every day or once a week you will ask yourself what's one thing i know i can accomplish today that helps me move in that direction i want to go um, this is my goal and just ask yourself what's one thing that you can do today that would help you move towards that direction the goal that you have it's very important that you have you set goals in your life and by the way what is your goal hey then look for opportunities for self discovery sometimes um we fail to discover what we have what are the traits what are the talents that we have in order to help us achieve in our goal or try to solve that problem another way another way to increase resilience is embrace healthy thoughts in embracing healthy thoughts keep things in perspective sometimes the way we think could play a significant part in how we feel mention a while ago we try to like to change the feeling try to check your irrational thinking what are the areas that even though it's not there's no truth truth about it 
but he kept on thinking. Fear. Okay. Then, accept changes. The only thing this world that cannot be changed is change itself. There are certain goals that will no longer be attainable. I have to change. I have to alter, I have to find ways. Like a river. The river, try to block the river, the river will try to find a way. How much more as individuals? We have the gift of knowledge, a will, knowledge, the ability to think what is best for us. And maintain a hopeful outlook. Sometimes you have to, we worry about a lot. Our fear. Why not try to visualize what you want? And what will be you doing to achieve what you want? Instead of young fear, because that fear is unrealistic. They have a change. What is your fear? By visualizing what you want in life. Then, another way to embrace healthy thoughts is learn from your past. Like to look back. From all those experiences, what did you learn? Hey. Then, increasing resiliency is there are times that we need to seek help. Especially if hindi na kaya, you feel that hindi na kaya, try to find someone you can talk to. Maybe in your place, your school, there is your um, mental health professionals. You can talk to them. Because sometimes, parang, I, I, I can do it. Yes, you can. But there are times that you have to look for someone. Someone you trust. You build, you open up yourself. Because those things would help you also build your resiliency. Now, aside from um, things in terms of increasing resiliency, coping strategies, one of the things mentioned in um, coping strategies is cognitive, meaning we try to identify in terms of problem solving. You know that these things may be not um, any more new to you. But allow me to share in terms of the steps in problem solving. The first step in problem solving is recognizing that we have problems. Sometimes a friend will ask you, how are you? And can you say, I'm okay, but deep within, you have these experiences. There is a problem, but we try to hide. We don't recognize that there is a problem. So the first step in problem solving is learn to recognize that there is a problem. After recognizing that you have a problem, you try to define the problem. What is the problem all about? Is it um, relationship? Is it financial? Is it value? Or other um, definition of the problem that is. Because if you can define thoroughly the problem, this 
para malapit or this is the first step that you can solve your problem. Then, you try to describe the interferences. Like for example, how this problem would interfere my day-to-day -day living. But you have to know. You have to um, describe thoroughly that this problem would interfere in this aspect. Then after describing the interferences, we try to identify options. When we say options, it should be many as you can. What are the options? Option A, option B, option C. You don't have to limit in terms of identifying the options that we'll be doing in solving that particular problem. Then, from the options identified, you choose the best options by trying to identify the pros and the cons. Maybe this option would help you solve the problem. Then, after knowing the options, what would be the steps needed? Op option one, what are the steps that you have to do in order to help you solve that particular problem. Steps should be step one, step two, three, and four. And after that, you try to implement the, the same option, then evaluate the outcome. Na solve ba yung problem? If not, baka hindi na-define truly ang problema. Okay? Before I will proceed, um, Ms. Vera? Yes, sir. Is there is, maro bang nagtanong sa, ano, sa group chat? Wala po, sir, pero marami silang insights. Okay. Opo. So, marami. Sabi nga dito, isa, especially daw in this trying time, it's best to have someone to acknowledge your thoughts and emotion and allows you to express it without invalidating it. May isa naman nagsabi, kasi nakapagsabi ka about yoga. So, sabi niya, yeah. yung yoga raw is effective stress remover. And then, everybody needs someone to talk to, especially now. And any form of exercise are considered to be stress reliever. And we have to accept that in, that's in our con control, that overthinking to the things that are our end. So, Technically, looking at irrational feelings, no, yung pagiging overthinker natin at some point because of the problem. And it is also important to know the history of meditation. Tapos yung <laughs> seeking help is a sign of strength. Of course, ito yun. A strength to acknowledge that you need someone to process things that are going on. Okay? And that there is nothing wrong in seeking help. Because recognizing that one cannot deal with his own issues is actually very humbling. Marami po silang insights na nakuha from your uh, discussion, Sir Sip. Okay, sige, thank you. So, well, proceed now. Okay. Yes, po. So, okay, so, um, those are the ways of, para mag hint lang to, how to build resiliency. Just uh, pick something that, para mag, this thing would help me. Or this thing is, Para bang, I'm doing these things. Continue enhancing that activity that would help you address that need. Or try to solve, help you in terms of dealing the stress. Then, 
um, our life journey has no roadmap. But if you can build our own resiliency, whatever adversities, whatever challenges that we encounter along the way, we know how to be. Because adversity would not, would, not, would not stop coming to us. Stresses would not come, would not stop coming to us. But we have that um, technique or some coping strategy. When the time will come, we know what to do. And also try to discover other ways, helpful ways, how to cope. Again, if you are doing these things and if it's helpful to you, continue. Maybe the basic things can help you, or can guide you what to do if you are facing some challenges in life. We have, as individuals, we have to increase our resiliency. We have the coping strategy, but we have to increase those things because it would help a lot. Sometimes, on the station of you, we tend to stay at home, lock in your room. Now, if you look at it, I say, well, wait using the problem-solving approach. If staying at home help you cope, then if it's not, then do something positive in such a way that you can solve the concern that you are facing. Hey, so life is a journey that must be traveled no matter how bad the roads and the accommodation. It's a quote from Oliver Goldsmith. Life is a journey. But each one of us must struggle. No matter what are the challenges that you encounter along the way and the accommodation that you will be in. For the past Christians, God never said that the journey would be easy. But they say that the arrival would be a worse time. So thank you for your um, attention and cooperation. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sir Safe. So I'll let you rest for a while. And we will <laughs> look for um, uh, some insights no? So there are a lot of insights, uh, especially when, uh, when dealing with problems alone, because sometimes we are not um, we are not that strong enough to face a problem. So it's really courageous if somebody uh, who does face their problem most of the time, be able to reach out no, and look for people who can help them. Again, no man is an island. In building resiliency, we have to know who we, we can trust and who can actually help us. Hey, uh, somebody said that this meaningful, uh, this webinar is really meaningful. Sir Sip, <laughs> what do you think about um, this? resiliency building when it comes to our students and our children uh, at these times I think that we really have to we really have to teach our students uh, how to build their resiliency because we are not in the war times anymore not in the um, economic downfall anymore so I do believe that it's another problem that we are facing right now. And most of it are actually mental health problems when it comes to our younger generation. Should we, uh, should we encourage this in school? Because I haven't seen, uh, I haven't seen many 
um, curricula that would include this, but hopefully they would later on, Sir Sip, am I right? Yes, yes. Very important that um, we, try, we try to design programs that would help the younger ones, especially the children in the home. We try to um, design some activities. If we try to um, use the basic pitch, we can use that one for our own children. Design program in such a way that parang hindi harata na ganito ang ginagawa mo. Na ito ang ito ang PSA program para sa um um coping for our children. But you can also tell them that um you can discuss with them that because of the situation, maybe um we can have some activities in order to cope or you can ask, para lang kumustahan lang among the family member, yung sa mga bata. If there is open communication, ang problema lang is if within the family there is open communication. So as parents, maybe you can design activities like, for example, try to observe your children. Are they stressed? Like, especially if nandun lang sa kwarto, if they have their own rooms, televisions. Wala nang interaction. So you learn to interact among the family. Or try to encourage them to um, have friends maybe using the platform through not ML. Not ML. <laughs> because at this time, um, maraming ano, nasa ML. You can spend a lot of time. If that's the way how the um, cope, then maybe they can play, but they have to manage the time. Not all evening, all day, they have to have ML, but they try to manage in such a way that, it, okay, if this is a coping mechanism, then you play, but it should be a certain time. You have to do something else. You have to do another way in order to um, express maybe um, not, not, not the computer, whatever things, because that's one way how the youth at this time, they, have, they like to play. They like to play ML. But, um, yeah, kasi kasabi ng isang pana, it brings more stress in life instead of helping. Because you cannot sleep, you cannot eat your um, food, parang busy ka na, busy na sa ML. But, if you give that um, area, you have to uh, say that you have to discipline yourself and you have to do something about it. And I hope that yung sa, ano, yung sa education system, we can put something na parabang a guide also because the teachers, I believe that they have also the training in terms of a psychological first aid so they have to design programs to help their students also. Hopefully. Kasi Hopefully nga yeah, po. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully nga yeah, po. Pero, pero totoo po yun. And I do hope uh, schools, uh, spe specifically public schools, uh, they would hold um, PFA, Psychological First Aid Training, to the teachers as well. Of course, um, Teachers aren't really professionals when it comes to dealing higher amount of uh, high degree kinds of cases. But the way that you talk to your students and the way you handle them when they speak about their problems using the PFA or the psychological first aid would be very helpful. Sir, there's one question, sir. Um, there's one question. I think this would... This would go back to belief in coping strategies. Is religiosity, um, so is spirituality or religiosity related to building resiliency and in what way? So I think yes, this yes. is part it's of the very, coping. Yeah, it's very important that um, your hope, our hope, you hope na someday all these things, parabang, will stop if not stop, ma-minimize. 
Um, we have to believe that there is someone for us Christians or not, not even though parang yung not the non-Christians because the non-Christians also have this belief. They believe that there's someone up there at the higher being. It is very important that we have to connect that one and place our hope because prayer, our spirituality, we have to enhance. But we don't have to stop only praying. We have to do something. Because, parang, yeah, I believe this one, but you did not do something about it. In other words, your belief system and your action would help us cope with the situation. Parang, Amen. Sometimes, <laughs> parang, you, you give everything to God. God, ito nang bahala. Ito nang bahala. Mm. It's good to entrust ourselves to God. Mm. But, we have to do something else. We have our task to do. God will guide. We should do the rest. Okay, so yeah. Technically, we should we should work for our improvement, uh, for the resolution of any problem, as well as have a deep hope that the problem will be resolved. So, parang ganon. Oh. Yes. Um, there are some insights. Considering the ratios of our licensed psychologists, guidance counselors, and mental health practitioners and advocates, oftentimes you just have to be sensitive and you don't have to be an expert. And thank you for this talk because it helps a lot to those who cares. Yes, that's really true. Actually, we also had a, a psychological first aid session alongside empathetic listening and empathetic leadership to make this actually a very holistic experience for everyone and not just building resiliency. And I'm very happy that all of the uh, all of our participants today, Sir Sip, are really here and are listening intently no, to this particular topic. Okay, so any more questions coming from our participants or any thoughts? Okay. Sir Sip, ang ganda talaga ng topic. Tingnan mo, marami ako nakuha. <laughs> I was like taking down notes uh, while you were talking. So that's that's how that's how I, I actually imbibe things. And every time, even if it's rerun, every time I host uh, this kinds of, kind of webinar, I always take something with me at home. <laughs> that's Mar- good. That's good. <laughs> that's a good practice. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so if there are no um, questions, I think um, we can actually happily close the webinar. Um, Michael and Noel, kindly make sure that everyone will get the link for the evaluation form. Sir Sip, thank you so much for accepting our inv- invitation for our year. Everyone, um, Sir Sip is one of our um, guidance um, counselors here, our GSS guidance services specialist here in UP Cebu. And he's also one of uh, our speakers and he spoke about empathetic listening uh, for a couple of times already. And we always get uh, more information as we listen to him. And it's very, uh, it's very um, parang enlightening every time we talk about those stuff. Okay, so a little reminder, uh, Noel, is that you sharing the screen or Michael? Okay, for those who, uh, for our evaluation, kindly make sure, okay, our evaluation and processing of the e-certificates are always automated. So please make sure to type in the correct spelling of your name since this will reflect on your e-certificates. And also, please be mindful of typing your email address because it is where you receive your certificates. We also suggest that you keep a copy of your response in the evaluation for you to verify if you have made mistakes. Always make sure to click send me a copy of my responses before submitting. Normally, it takes less than three minutes after submitting to receive your certificate and should you not be able to receive it by 5 p.m. today, just send a reply message with your concern to the confirmation email that we sent via the Zoom. No? It's msgaloria at up.edu.ph and we will manually send the certificate on the next working day. 
Thank you very much for always staying with us. And remember that the evaluation link is open for only 15 minutes. Don't forget to evaluate. And thank you so much for staying in with us. And hopefully you will also be with us in our next uh, public webinars from the UP, from the University of the Philippines, Cebu. We have friends coming from other UP uh, constituent units, coming from Los Banos, coming from Diliman. We're so happy to have you here. And we are also happy that these information about these uh, webinars were able to reach you as well. So we hope to see you in more of our webinars in the next few months. Okay, Sir Sip, would you like to say, um, would you like to give a parting message or a message a for words. everyone? Few words, lang few words. Few words, okay. <laughs> so, um, listening to your responses or reading to your responses, I'm happy also that um, you learned something. You appreciated the webinar. Um, parang, where was the webinar? It's very good, very good. But did you learn something? And how would you apply your learning? That's the thing that I'm looking forward with the participants this kind of seminar. You, learn, you discover or you learn these things. You appreciated the webinar. And you pick up something that you learned. Now, the next question is, how would you apply your learning? I hope that whatever you learn, you can use that one in your day-to-day -day living, in relating with other people, in helping people. Because our task here this world is we try to help each other. We try to... Um, reach out, try to impart the learnings that we have to other people. Parabang, be the light of other people who need a light also. Be the candle. You give the candle to other people who need light. So the learning through your um, actions that you encourage them to continue, go on with all those challenges in life. In life, be the light to other people. Share your life. It is better, it is better to light just one little candle. We have 229 participants. If you light your candle in your home, in your work, then we say it would create something, um, some, um, parabang, because of that experience, the sea light with your um, actions, the sea light yung, yung nagawa mo, then it would be good enough from the 229 participants this afternoon. Yan lang po. Hey, salamat po, Sir Sif. Everyone, don't forget to be the light, okay? And to give light to everyone. So. If, if the sky is too dark right now, you will be that one star over there, which will be some sort of a guide. Okay, so 229 people being a light would give us more than enough amount of people who would care for the world. Okay, so Michael, shall we open their cameras? Everyone, can you open your cameras for us so that we can have a little bit of um, photo opportunity? <laughs> photo <laughs> op, Mike? <laughs> Yes, po. <laughs> Hi po sa lahat! Yes. Having to see all of these beautiful and guapo faces. <laughs> I feel okay, beautiful so, right now. <laughs> so, yung natira natin, nine slides na lang. So, yung iba na, na natapos ng evaluation, nag-exit na eh. So, keep smiling lang po kasi we never know kung sa ang slides tayo maano. <laughs> okay. okay! Heart, heart, heart! <laughs> Okay. Okay. Salamat po sa lahat na nag-attend ngayon. So we are very happy. This will be the uh, second to the last ba to Mike? <laughs> yes po. Um, last na po tayo sa psychosocial uh, programs natin this next Saturday, October 9. Okay. With caring for students with uh, anxiety and depression with Miss um, Jasilo Saturina. Okay. Pero meron pa tayong upcoming, right? We have um, research ethics. Uh, and yes, we, po. Um, we also have um, IP or intellectual property and copyrights. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I do hope you will also be able to join us. Uh, those are very important aspects of the digital world right now. Okay, so so we have yes, tapos na tayo sa ano sa psychosocial sa mga stress management so ngayon to the business ano na naman tayo business and teaching na naman tayo <laughs> um, Mandira, Mandira. yes sir maybe Sip. some of the participants would like to organize something like this in your school maybe you can also you can request yes so, no because I I do this but not the uh, building resiliency but empathic listening a group in Manila. Oh. Yeah, a group so, in Manila. Yeah. If, if they want, if you want uh, to uh, to invite Sir Sip to be part of your um, your own webinars in your schools or in your organization, do let us know and we will uh, we will make sure that your message will be sent to Sir Sip. Okay, yeah, or then, we can we can put uh is it okay sir sip if we can put your email yes it's okay then um do not ask how much <laughs> <laughs> ask, ask yourself this this seminar can help to our community Yan lang. Mm, yes if available yung mga platform then uh, this activity will be of help to your community then organize and do not ask how much because yeah. um, the office is helping. Yes, public service is one of our mission and we have to make yeah. sure that our ability to do public service is uh, known to everyone. And we are actually, I know, we, we would very be glad no, to, to have you with us and have us with your uh, communities as well. Yeah, kasi yung how much uh, it would block us yes. to help. Mm. Like, pag walang budget, so wala nang seminar. <laughs> hindi, hindi sa na ganun. Okay. But, um, in helping, there is no amount. Mm. When we help, we help. Actually, this public webinar is free and this is a volunteer work also on the side of Sir Sip and on the side of the UP Sabuti LRC because we don't actually work on a Saturday. We work from Monday to Friday and uh, everyone, including Michael and Noel, are always here every Saturday to cater to the needs of the public. So make sure that if you wanted to open up a webinar like this, and you wanted to to have us help you, we can actually do that. And Sir Sip is also very willing to be part, especially if you wanted to do webinars regarding empathetic listening, building resiliency, um, that has to do with those uh, 